Welcome back to Secret Weapons, and today we're taking a look at the Jam Pedals Delay Llama Extreme. It feels like precious few people are as late to the party that is Jam Pedals as I am. Uh, it seems like you can't turn around on the internet without seeing somebody raving about their stuff. Uh, it feels like anybody who's ever been in the same room with one of their circuits has fallen in love with the high quality circuit design, the high quality craftsmanship, the kind of quirky, fun, hand-painted aesthetics on so many of their pedals. And I just kind of let it all pass by me for a long time. And so at this last NAM, I finally kind of made a concerted effort to go check their stuff out. I went and found the booth, met the guys, and tried out their gear. And I have to say, I was blown away. I, I knew, like I said, through osmosis, that like their stuff was great. You just can't be in the guitar gear nerd area on the internet and not have heard about how good their stuff is. But to play it for yourself is to really understand that it is made different, that it is incredibly high quality. And I walked away really, really astonished by two specific devices. We're only deep diving one of them in this video, obviously, and that is the Dalai Lama Extreme. But I do wanna give special mention to the Rattler. They're kind of unapologetically chaotic distortion box, kind of a uh, long tail rodent inspired circuit, but with like, an incredible amount of balance to it that doesn't carve any unnecessary frequencies, that never feels harsh, and that will just absolutely explode your amp in all the best ways. We're not talking about this pedal today, but we should at some point. This thing is something special. Back to the Delay Llama. Uh, I had kind of heard little bits and pieces of the original Delay Llama, the non-extreme, kind of more reasonable form factored version of this pedal. Uh, but I never really looked into it, nor had I really looked into this. And when I finally sat down and tried this, I was astonished that something with three knobs, three switches, and three foot switches could be as built out as this is. So let's talk about what is in the Delay Llama Extreme. First things first is at its core, it is a straightforward, well-tuned, phenomenal sounding analog delay. We're talking uh, on, tap, time, repeats, and level. Very straightforward. You've got trails, you've got a kill dry, and you've got three subdivisions for your tap tempo. Mono in, mono out. Simple, straightforward, effective. And that, as far as I'm aware, is kind of what the basis of the original Delay Llama is as well. Where the extreme gets really fascinating is with this little arcade button down here at the bottom and the ability to save not only four onboard presets to the pedal, but also to access four different kind of extreme modes within the Delay Llama Extreme. And those four modes are a vibrato modulation applied to your analog delay repeats, a revoicing of the delay as kind of a tape mode complete with a controllable amount of kind of which we consider to be crinkle or tape warping, a randomized version that will basically apply what I, what I would consider to be kind of a randomized LFO to the delay speed, creating kind of chaotic pitch changes that don't necessarily feel bendy, but feel very kind of like segmented. And then the fourth one is a kind of stepped quantized pitch shifter, where you are using the kind of like alt control button and your rate and level controls to set your two intervals for your pitch shifts and the kind of pattern that it kind of arpeggiates through. And like I said, that is a lot of stuff to put into this simple of an enclosure. But once you kind of get a handle on the workflow for it, it ends up being incredibly straightforward, very accessible. But like I said, most importantly, it just sounds so good. But that's enough talking about it. I think we just need to hear this thing. We need to walk through those modes. We need to take a look at kind of how to navigate such a simple pedal with such a complex set of sounds inside of it. So we're going to plug it back in. We're going to grab our guitar and we're going to listen to the Delay Llama Extreme. So as always, before we get into our sound samples, let's go ahead and talk through our signal chain and the context we are working in. I am playing a 59 historic reissue Gibson Les Paul into the Origin FX Cali 76 compressor, Benson Germanium Boost, 1981 Inventions LVL, Jam Pedals Rattler, and the DCX Boost by Origin FX. Uh, we go into the front of our amplifier, which is the Harmony H620 with the Jam Pedals Delay Llama Extreme in the effects loop, and then the line level out of the amplifier to the Quad Cortex for some stereo reverbs and cab sims. Uh, for these sound samples, we're only going to be using the guitar in to the front of the amp, 
the delay and the cab sims. We'll get a little bit of reverb from the amplifier, but we're bypassing pretty much all of the other effects uh, for these sound samples. So here's our guitar into the front of the amp with the delay bypassed. <laughs> Let's go ahead and bring in the Jam Pedals Delay Llama Extreme. This is kind of the base level version of the Dalai Lama. Uh, there is no extreme modes enacted right now. What you're hearing is just kind of the stock sound in this thing. And one of the things that I find so compelling about it is that uh, it reacts really well to your playing dynamics. You can get really gentle, kind of even warm sounding repeats by playing softly or by digging in a little bit. You can actually create a lot more kind of, I guess, crispiness would be the word I would use on those repeats. So here is an example of kind of you're playing dynamics, changing the character of those repeats based on how hard you drive the circuit. You can hear it really crisps up in a really nice way, even after the amplifier itself. One of the interesting things about this too is uh, the amount of regeneration you have, kind of how quickly this pedal will do runaway oscillation can be adjusted internally via a trim pot. But uh, I found in kind of getting to know it and playing around with it that it also is more likely to run away uh, in terms of its oscillations uh, at, at faster delay speeds than slower delay speeds. So let's take a look at that. Let's take that regen up slightly past noon and go to 800 milliseconds, our slowest delay time. You can hear you do get a nice gentle kind of like falling off of those delays. If we go up to a faster delay time. Uh, stock internal trim pot configuration will not run away at minimum delay times. But like I said, you can make an adjustment to this in the internals of this delay. So that's the basics of how this delay sounds. Let's go ahead and walk through some of the actual physical features on the pedal before we really dive into kind of how to further manipulate and get a load of very kind of experimental sounds out of the Delay Llama Extreme. Uh, at its core, it is remarkably straightforward. As you can see, you have uh, time, repeats or regen, and level. 
uh, those three knobs across the top, incredibly straightforward, mono in, mono out. You then have uh, switches on the face for trails, a kill dry, and your tap tempo subdivisions. Uh, and because that's kind of a analog based time tap, tem uh, tap tempo, you can get musical jumps as you switch between subdivisions. On the left side of the pedal, you have three jacks for external preset switching, external tap tempo, and external expression control on the time parameter itself. And along the bottom from left to right, you have your bypass foot switch, your center foot switch, which will activate and deactivate extreme mode by holding, or quick taps to cycle through presets. You have a little arcade button, which uh, serves as your kind of like alternate function, as well as cycling through the different modes in extreme and your tap tempo. Let's go ahead and take a look at those three switches. So number one, you have trails or true bypass, which basically allows you to bypass the pedal with or without losing your repeats. I pretty much always leave it on, uh, but it can be nice to have that off in case you want to like deal with things like that, that runaway self oscillation for kind of quick removal. Center position is going to be your kill dry. Like I said, you have your tap tempo. To access the extreme modes, you press and hold that center foot switch. You have four lights directly above it and then one light centered above those. When that center light is activated, that shows that you are in an extreme mode on the pedal. Uh, the ones below it will kind of temporarily light up to show you which version of extreme you're accessing and uh, will stay lit to kind of tell you what preset you are on. So now we have that light lit up. We are in extreme mode number one, which is a vibrato applied to the analog delay trails. The rate control is going to control the depth of your vibrato and the level control is going to control the speed. To change those controls, you, you press and hold that black arcade button and then make adjustments to the rate and level controls.
my favorite tricks here is to get into these modes, these extreme modes, and being and having this be the moment where you start to really make great use of that kill dry. The kill dry can obviously be incredibly useful if you are running this as a reamp tool uh, or in various kind of parallel effect paths uh, in more complicated guitar rigs. But for kind of a more straightforward rig like we're currently using, essentially just pedal and amplifier, having kill drive for some of these modes actually gives you access to some really interesting stuff like this. You can get like a really great sounding vibrato out of this, or conversely, you can bring that kill dry back out and blend it in for a chorus. Let's go ahead and jump over to Extreme Mode 2. The way we cycle through these is we press and hold the black arcade button and hit the tap tempo to kind of uh, knock over to the next mode. You'll see the mode, uh, the kind of four lights underneath temporarily light up as you do that to let you know which mode you are cycling into. So we've now moved into tape age mode in the Delay Llama, uh, basically applying a more tape-like EQ curve to your analog delay, uh, a little bit sharper, a little bit less uh, kind of like warm low end. And the kind of like secondary adjustment here is going to be that level control. By using the alternate control on that, you increase what I like to think of as basically tape damage, little fluctuations and crinkles in your tape, giving you a little kind of like fun, happy accident, less predictability in terms of the modulation than you do in that, than you get in that uh, vibrato mode. <laughs> Let's start with it nice and cranked. The 
this is probably the mode I would most frequently go to if I wanted that kind of like dotted eighth tap tempo, very kind of the edge rhythmic delay sound. bring that way down for less frequent and less dramatic kind of tape shifts. Again, this is another uh, mode that I really love using that kill dry kind of like unity speed, unity pitch, kind of like lo-fi modulation. This is a great spot to bring in kind of like a stereo delay and reverb after the fact to kind of show how you can add a lot of kind of subtle movement and character by using this as a modulation device as much as using it as a tape as a as an actual delay device. So we've brought in uh, an additional tape delay and stereo reverb in the quad cortex. Mm -hmm. Let's bring in that jam pedals again. So this is random mode. Your tap tempo and your time control no longer control the rate of your delay itself, but instead control the frequency of randomized, mostly square wave pitch jumps based 
uh, on switching the time within the pedal, basically allowing you to get kind of quantized and semi-quantized pitch shifts randomly thrown into the time uh, kind of control in the delay. Yeah, it can get really interesting. Uh, like I said, the time control is going to control how frequently you get them. find that somewhere buried in there is something really musical and interesting uh, as long as you kind of, at least on guitar, care enough to do kind of the in-daw post-production surgery to kind of like extricate the really cool moments. I have a lot of try a lot of trouble finding the really kind of like musical use for it with a guitar. My estimation is that running this uh, with something like a drum machine can actually result in something really, really cool. I think I think running percussion through this in a parallel loop would actually result in something really interesting and fascinating. That's a, that's a weird one, but like I said, I think it has some non-guitar incredible secret weapon value. And this brings us to the fourth, final, and I think most impressive of the extreme modes in the Dalai Lama Extreme. This is Pitch Shift, a basically quantized pitch shifting sequencer engine. You use the R controls alt function to pick between five distinct musical intervals and the level control, uh, that, that one's alternate function to pick between four patterns or a sequencer mode, which then is controlled in turn again by the rate control. The repeats control is going to pick between an octave up and an octave down, a second up and a seventh down, a fourth up and a fifth down, a fifth up and a fourth down, a ninth up and a seventh down. And that level control is going to pick between, like I said, four patterns and a sequencer. We're going to start as simply as possible. We're going to set this up as an octave up and down and walk through the different patterns. You can really hear exactly what's happening here. And then we'll start jumping through some of the other uh, intervals as well as taking a brief look at that sequencer mode. jumping to that second sequencer or the, that, that second pattern, but the same interval.
And again, this is one of those moments where I do really love that kill dry function. And again, as you get into some of these weirder, more bizarre uh, sequencer patterns, this is another great example to go ahead and do that thing where you bring in a secondary stereo delay and or big washi stereo reverb and let this stuff kind of become sound design. And for context on what you're actually hearing here. Yeah, this mode gets really, really bizarre and really, really cool. Uh, it's the kind of thing, in my opinion, that can be very hard to contextualize solo guitar like this, especially as we kind of like strip away those delay and reverbs uh, that kind of like further wash and obfuscate what's happening here and rely perfectly on the guitar itself, like for example. Like, that is a great example of something that is a fundamental building block of a bigger, grander sound. And I think that this thing gives you great access to that stuff in a very refined way. Because you'll notice you get basically no clock noise out of this, which is incredibly rare for an analog delay doing these kinds of things. Let's wrap this video up by taking a look at something that is deeply, deeply important in this pedal, which is recalling the sound that you just discovered. It's kind of great because of the kind of very limited and straightforward control scheme that offers you so much in this pedal, creating a sound does not take a lot of work. Remembering and finding it again can. And so here's how you make that a non-issue. So to save a sound in the Delay Llama Extreme, you wanna cycle through to the preset that you want to save over, dial in the sound you want to hear, and then go ahead and just press and hold the center and tap foot switches until the lights blink. And just like that, you can recall that preset by scrolling to slot number three using that center foot switch at any time.